Hello, my name is David Carr and today I'll be showing you how I made my sculptural speaker. This was produced as my final major project while studying at Cleveland College of Art and Design. Like with any other project, there was a particularly long design and development phase. Here are just a few images taking us through from one of the near finalised foam board mock-ups and then through to a more finalised MDF version of the design. It was important for me to build this MDF version to work out if the cantilever that I designed would actually work in practice based on all different weights and to ensure that there was actually enough space in the base to conceal all of the circuitry needed to run the speakers. To build the speakers from, I was able to get a large amount of the hardwood U. This is a particularly desirable hardwood to build from because of its density, versatility and its striking grain structure. One of the first jobs was to then mark and cut out all of the blanks to make the wooden elements of the speakers from. I was very mindful whilst doing this to try and get a visually interesting grain pattern running through the billets. One of the main jobs for the four speaker modules was to slice off the front faces. These will be later processed and then bonded back to the original billet to try and match in the grain structure. Work could then continue on the base of the speakers as a large volume of it would need to be recessed to allow the circuitry to fit in. This was done by both chain drilling and using a mortising tool. At around this stage I started to turn my mind towards getting other parts created at the same time. For the back stands on the speaker pods I needed these turned out of solid perspex. To do this I relied on a local machining company that was able to quickly and easily produce the parts. These were just roughly turned but to a high accuracy that would then be later sanded back and polished up to a high sheen. For producing the semi-transparent perspex arm that's a main feature of the speakers, I first went to a local stockist to see about the correct grade of perspex. The arm itself was cut on a laser cutter using a 2D CAD drive. The three elements to the arm were then separated, had wires ran through the middle section, and were then glued together with a solvent cement. This laminated element could then be worked on with a power file to try and achieve the correct form. Because of the rough and aggressive nature of this tool, it left undulations within the surface. This was then remedied later on in the process by manually sanding with a flat block. To work on the speaker pods, I first mounted them to a face plate and spanned them up on the lathe. Into these I carved out dome back cavities for the speaker to sit in. After this was done the billets could then be further marked out before manually worked to dome the back of them. These were processed by a power file, manually with a surf form, and then with progressively finer grits of sandpaper until a good finish had been achieved on all four. Now working back with the bays, I've been able to get a local company to water jet cut some stainless steel plate to go in the base. This will be used as extra weight to hold down the cantilever and also finishes the base off quite nicely. At this stage I also did further work to hollow out the circuitry paths within the base and then proceeded to flat off the main angles on the button and battery side of the speaker. 
Would the bear still square at this point? I worked on the channel to accept the cantilevered arm. Both parts were progressively sanded down until a nice socket joint was formed for the arm to sit in. Once this was done, I could then set about the heavy sculpting work that needed to be done on the top side of the base. The majority of the roughing out was done here with the power file, but then it was manually work afterwards to a better surface finish. With the base at a reasonable stage, it was now time to go back to working on the speaker pops. After marking these out, I cut away the centre piece. This then allowed a water jet cut stainless steel insert to fit into them. This will ultimately become the front of the speaker pops. With all four of these done, I then matched them back together and glued them into place, trying as best I could to match up the grain. With all four of these done and set overnight, I then worked to sand them round to a better profile. From the water jet cutters, I'd also got the battery facing and the button facing cut. After some rough sanding, these were also ready to match up with the main body. These were then progressively sanded to try and blend in the form between the two for a seamless transition. At this stage I was now able to start and put the pieces together to gain some sense of what finalised sculpture would be like. With the arm now getting to a more finished state, I decided to proceed to wet and dry this and polish it up to a high glossy sheen. With this now done, I decided to finish off the speaker pods. A hole was drilled into the back of each of them to accept the arm connectors and then they were sanded to the final finish, ready for the finish to be applied later in the process. These were then test fitted into place to make sure that they fit correctly onto all of the connectors. The connectors themselves at this point had been polished up and also had a hollowed blue rod glued inside of them. Linking back to the aquatic themes of the speaker, the solvent cement between these two surfaces was bled in and bubbled this creates quite an aquatic notion to them. The final stage before these could be bonded into the arm was to cut a simple channel into the back of them. This was so that they would sleeve correctly over the wire channel within the arm. These connectors were then permanently glued into the arm and the speaker pods were positioned over them to check true alignment. With everything progressing nicely it was now time to recess the switch into the base. This was done by simply drilling a hole, slotting it in and matching it into all of the different wire tracks behind. I then continued to work on the base until all of the pathways beneath the stainless steel plate had been completed. I now continued to work between all of the different elements on the speakers to try and advance them at an even pace. Because the design of the sculptural speaker had an inbuilt amplifier, I needed a way to have a 9 volt battery within the base of the speaker that was also easily accessible. The solution that I came up with was to have a slider housing both the battery and a lighting cluster that could be pulled out from within the body. Here are just a few images showing its basic construction. There were a few small parts on the base that needed to be filled. This was done by mixing up dust from the U that had been sanded earlier with some water-based glue. This was then spread around all of the parts that needed to be filled back up, left to dry and then neatly cut back to level. At this stage I was now ready to start and apply finishes to the wooden parts of the speakers. Before doing this I had one last test fit of the speaker fronts into the respective pods. After ensuring that all of the wooden parts of the speaker were sanded to a very high level of finish, 
I then proceeded to apply a cellulose based sanding sealer to all of the wooden parts. Here you can instantly see the difference between the unfinished on the left and the finished on the right. All of the wooden parts got about three coats in total, allowing for drying in between. After these layers had set, the wooden parts were then rubbed back with quadruple knot wire wool. Once all of the surface imperfections were removed, beeswax was then applied to all of these surfaces and buffed up to a high glossy sheen. At this near finish stage, I was then ready to glue into place the battery slider. I also glued the 9 volt battery connector into place within the slider before proceeding to wire it into place. With the battery slider now in place, I was able to properly test fit the stainless steel element which sits in front of it. After this, I proceeded to sand it to a higher level, polish up the stainless steel, and then glue a frosted blue lens behind it. Once this was done, it could be permanently glued into place on the battery slider. Now came the time to start and fully assemble the speaker frontages. I paid particular attention to try and mount the speakers to the back of them, squared and lined up with everything else, and proceeded to glue in the blue perspex inserts either side of it, behind the stainless steel frontage. I used small laser cut cardboard alignment tabs to then glue on the final bit of stainless steel to the frontage. With all of these now completed, and fitting properly into the speaker pods, it was now time to take them back out and glue the pods into place on the speaker arm. Whilst gluing these into place, I used elements of cardboard to try and keep them as level as possible as they were glued into place. After all of these were done, I then proceeded to glue on the stainless steel surround for the button push. Once this was bonded into place, the button push itself could then be glued onto the button backing. The final bit for completing the battery slider was now simply to wire in the LED that sits within the lighting cluster. With everything now in its proper place within the base element, I was able to finish off wiring up the circuitry before sealing it into the base with the stainless steel plate. The final part that now remained to be done on the speakers was simply to wire them up into place. Once these had been soldered into place, the speaker fronts could then be permanently glued into the speaker pods. That now marked the end of the build for the sculptural speaker project. The sculptural speaker, along with supporting display boards, was then displayed in the end of year CCAD show. By public vote, the speaker then went on to win the award for Best Design Show for Product Design. The sculptural speaker itself was based on the visual influences of vessels and aquatic forms. The design was also influenced by futurism and the ethos of it wouldn't look out of place on a spaceship. During the design process, and because of selecting high quality materials such as high grade perspex, polished stainless steel, an English view. I've been able to produce a sculptural speaker that has a real sense of sophistication, elegance and luxury to it.